Oh, Isa, am I unmuted? Okay. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Welcome this morning. Um, are there any joys and concerns that someone would like to share? Just raise your hand so Isa can unmute you. I'm, I'm unmuted. Um, so just uh, got an email from my sister to a blessing and a concern. So my sister, who's a missionary in Africa, came home when my brother passed away and has been unable to go back because of COVID um, and has since made the decision that she's going to remain in the States to help be there for my mother um, and just go back a few times a year and work online. So that's a great blessing. And the concern is that in that same email, she mentioned that the church in Timbuktu is really struggling with the COVID virus. They've been struck hard. Um, so please pray for the church in Timbuktu. And um, my, most of my extended family is in South Louisiana and South Florida. So um, storm coming. So just pray for all those who are in that path. Anybody else? Um, I learned I learned this week that um, George Parker's sister, who lives in New Jersey, um, has recently died. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, she did die of, of COVID. So okay. please, please keep George and Francis in your prayers as well. And keep Susan in your prayers as we venture with this plague. Absolutely. Mm. Any others? Well, please join me in the responsive call to worship. God's spirit is moving through our gathering, creating and recreating, judging and empowering. Let God's light break forth to illuminate us and the shadows be dispelled. The earth brings forth life-giving food and our need for nourishment is supplied. We give thanks for the sustenance, the sustenance God provides and seek to share all humankind. God grants us dominion over the plant's resources and calls us to the earth. We seek insight and willpower to use God's gifts with prudence and imagination. God pronounces all creation good and joins us for a day of renewal. We rejoice in our Sabbath opportunities as we celebrate the Resurrection Day. Please join me in our morning prayer. Eternal God, who towers as high as goodness can reach and stoops as low as love can bend, we worship you. In creation, you come to us as a presence that enables us to cultivate the earth, respect, and care for it. In Christ, you come to us as a presence that enables us to love our neighbors and serve them. In the Holy Spirit, you come to us as a presence that enables us to discern our oneness and to celebrate it. Holy Spirit, our country is in pain and there are more concerns on our mind and prayers in our heart than we can even speak. We trust that you intercede for us in those times when we cannot give breath to our words. Bring justice to heal wounds that have long been bleeding and your peace to eradicate the pain. Make of us instruments of both justice and peace. Holiness, word, power. Re you reveal yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty, creative, life-generating dancer who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with singing and rejoicing. O Lord, our God, our creator and redeemer and sustainer, we stand in awe of you and rejoice that you have chosen us to be your own. Even though you are present to us in more ways than we can ever know, we come here today seeking your presence through Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Creation displays the glory of God, but our sin keeps us from rejoicing in the love God reveals. Yet Christ Jesus, the Son, carried our sins to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can praise God, our Maker, Savior, and life-giving God. Therefore, knowing that we have already received the forgiveness that we need, let us together confess our sin so that we may receive such grace. Andres. God of grace, love, and communion, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We ignore your commandments, stray from your way, and follow other gods. Have mercy on us. Forgive our sin and races to new lives so we may serve you faithfully and give honor to your holy name. Friends, hear the good news. God did not send the Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Sing into our ears, O Spirit, the holy word of life. Tell us who we are and to whom we belong, so that we may live with gratitude for all that you have done. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, first scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians, 13th chapter, verses 11 through 13. Hear the word of God. Finally, brothers and sisters, goodbye. Put things in order, respond to my encouragement, be in harmony with one another, and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Say hello to each other with a holy kiss. All of God's people say hello to you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from the very end of Matthew's gospel, uh, chapter 28, beginning at verse 16. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At dawn, on the day following the resurrection, on the day following the Sabbath, Mary and another woman returned to Jesus' tomb. Instead of the quiet vigil they were prepared for, the ground shakes underneath their feet, and an angel rolls away the stone covering the entrance. The angel tells them that Jesus has been raised from the dead, and they are to return and tell his disciples the news and then direct them to go to Galilee. As they are going, Jesus meets them, giving them the same message for the disciples to go to Galilee. It is there that they will see Jesus. 
These, these are the only post-resurrection appearances noted in Matthew's gospel. Matthew does not tell us of Jesus walking into a locked room to reassure his disciples or joining travelers to interpret scripture and break bread with them. There's no breakfast on the beach or ascension into heaven. Matthew's gospel moves quickly from an empty tomb to a mountain in Galilee and ends with Jesus sending his disciples into the world with the words that we now know as the Great Commission. The Eleven disciples make their way to the mountain, and when they see Jesus, just as the women had done at the tomb, they worship him. Even as they worship, some doubt. We are not told how many or which of the disciples doubted. Perhaps there is something different about Jesus. Neither Mary Magdalene nor Cleopas had recognized Jesus at first. Do they doubt it is even really him? Even seeing him, do they doubt that Jesus is alive and with them again? This news really is too good to be true, and maybe their eyes are playing tricks on them. But their doubt may be deeper. Their doubt may be wondering from wondering if Jesus would call them for they had all fled from the cross and Peter had earlier doubted Jesus when Jesus called him on the water and after a few steps his doubt led him to sink into the water does Peter again have doubt following the baptism the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and then Satan tried to tempt him. He took Jesus to a high mountain to show him all the kingdoms of the world, telling him that all of this would be his if Jesus would worship him. Jesus is again on a high mountain, and he says to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus, now Lord over all, does not see the kingdoms of the world arrayed at his feet only these 11 ordinary people, these doubting, denying, betraying, and yet faithful people have answered Jesus' call to meet him at the mountain. This moment reveals that from the beginning of Christ's church, faith and doubt have mingled. They are not mutually exclusive. Even with the resurrected Jesus standing in front of them, some doubt. Methodist Bishop Will Williman calls this moment a gift to the church. Theologian Paul Tillich writes, doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is an element of it. Jesus does not try to dispel their doubt or find it necessary to convince his disciples of anything. What Jesus does do is go to them. Jesus meets them just where they are and just as they are, and he commissions them. Jesus has previously sent his disciples out on their own to cure the sick, heal the leper, and cast out demons, but they were not to go to the Gentiles, only the house of Israel. Jesus now expands their territory and their work. They are to now go to everyone, including Gentiles, and they are to baptize and teach. Of this commission, baptizing will be the easier part. To effectively teach takes time, time to explain, time to answer questions, and time to model what is being taught. Near the beginning of Jesus' ministry in a sermon on another mountain, Jesus taught them to turn the other cheek to give more than is asked, to walk an extra mile to carry someone's burden, to love not only neighbor, but also enemy. Until now, teaching has been solely the work of Jesus. Now Jesus commissions his disciples to teach, and they are to teach and especially model Jesus' teaching as they go into the world. Jesus now has authority over heaven and earth and continues the work of bringing the two together. 
as Jesus' disciples, we pray for the continuation and fulfillment of this work when we pray as we did just a few minutes ago in the prayer he taught, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus commissions the disciples to do this work, inviting them fully into the work and vision of God's kingdom on earth, which reflects God's heavenly kingdom. Last week was Pentecost, a day in the life of the church where we can drape the sanctuary in red, hang doves, and all sorts of symbols of wind and fire. Even cake is okay on Pentecost as it has become known as the birthday of the church. Today is Trinity Sunday. It is a Sunday that is a little bit unusual in that it does not mark an event in the life of Jesus or the church. Trinity Sunday is about a doctrine, a way we have come to understand the multifaceted nature and revelation of God as three persons of God, the Creator, God is Jesus Christ, and God is Holy Spirit. We have come up with all sorts of ways to explain the Trinity. Trinity is like a tree with roots, trunk, and branches. The Trinity is like a person who is daughter, sister, wife. The Trinity is like water, which can be liquid, ice, or gas, liquid, a solid, or gas. The Trinity has been symbolized as shamrock, triangle, and Celtic knot. And all of these are good to a point but they eventually fall short to explain what is ultimately a mystery. What the Trinity does reveal is relationship, ongoing, interwoven, and internet, interconnected mutuality of being. We refer to the three natures of God in different ways, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Richard Roy, Franciscan priest, writes, don't start with the one and try to make it into three. Start with the three and see that this is the deepest nature of the one. The three cannot be separated, but each informs our understanding of the whole. The dynamic relationship of the Trinity, often described as a dance, is expressed in its ability to move and interact. One part fuels the life while also receiving influence and energy for the work of its own part. In the Trinity, there is intermingled and dynamic relationship, but there is also diversity. God is too big to be experienced in only one way, and so we are given three ways, and yet each of these combined is not totally expressive of who God is. Something new is always being revealed. And that brings joy to life. In the Trinity, there is hospitality. Among the three natures of God, there is an interaction that is always welcoming and drawing in the other. In Genesis, Abraham is in the desert when he, we are told that he is visited by the Lord, who appeared as three angels. Abraham invites them to stay and offers them water and a meal. An icon by Russian artist Andrei Rublev expresses this visit. There's a picture of it on your bulletin. It shows the hospitality Abraham gave to the three angels. In this 15th century icon, Rublev depicts the three angels as women and interprets this visit from the Lord as the three figures of the Trinity. Each of the figures is looking at, the, at one of the others while pointing to a third. Their hands reach towards the other and their fingers point towards the other. Each is making room for as well as including the other. Contemporary icon, temporary icon artist Kelly Lattimore has painted an icon based on Rubelov's but his interpretation of the three figures of the Trinity is a bit different. The three women are of different races and ethnicities, and instead of reaching out to the other, their hands are clasped together. 
there's a website address at the bottom of your bulletin that you can go to to see a picture of this icon. In both of these, one from today's world and one from centuries ago, in both of these, there is room at the table for another person. Jesus has given all authority, is given all authority over heaven and earth. Jesus commissions his disciples to go into the world. It is a commission, but it is also an invitation, an invitation to join Jesus, not only at the table, but in the ongoing relationship with him and with his Father and with his Holy Spirit in the world. These last few months, and especially these last few weeks, have revealed a great deal about the importance of relationships. As we have been separated from those we are close to, and there are now physical barriers between even casual contacts of people we know while we are running errands, shopping in the grocery store. Now, instead of being able to truly interact with each other, we must stay distanced and we try to convey a smile with our eyes alone. The last two weeks have revealed much about our relationships as a society. While doing what we can to reduce the spread of an unseen virus, we've learned that we must learn to see one another with new eyes that are wide open. We have a great deal of work to do to heal the health and the well being of our country. Relationships matter more now than ever in the process of learning, healing, helping to bring about change, in growing and working for the kingdom of God to be revealed on earth. Scripture shows us from the very beginning to end that peace is not truly possible until there is justice and peace for all people. Paul's words we heard today are his closing to a letter to the Corinthian church. It has been a contentious time, and Paul urges the church to, to, care, to care and treat one another kindly, to be in harmony and live in peace. Paul does not expect them to all think alike, and in an earlier letter, he had rejoiced in the diversity of the church. He is urging them in the same manner as he did in a letter to the Philippians to have the same mind as Christ and care for others in a way that will bring the harmony and peace he wants for their lives. Paul knows that to do this, they will need the power of the Holy Spirit to be at work within and among them. And he says, put things in order and the God of love and peace will be with you. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, let us boldly proclaim what we believe by joining together in a responsive affirmation of faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us give back God's tithes and our offerings. O 
O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory high above the heavens. When I look into the heavens, I see the work of your fingers. In the heavens, you have established the moon and the stars. What are human beings that you should pay attention to us? Why would you care about us mortals? You have made us a little lower than the angels. You have crowned us with glory and honor. You have given us dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under our care. All sheep and oxen, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. All these things you have put under our care. Our Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Friends, even though we are in many different places, we are gathered around one table, a table that our Lord has set for us this, to remember him in this meal that he has given us. We are reminded that on the afternoon of his resurrection, our Lord walked with two of his disciples. When it was time to stop for a meal, they invited him in and it was there that he became the host instead of the guest. In the blessing and the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. We recognize him still in this meal. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal and triune God, whom we worship as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, you spoke the word that brought the world into being. By the Holy Spirit, you you by the Holy Spirit, you brought order out of chaos and breathed life into your creatures. In parental love, you stood by us in spite of our disobedience, correcting us with gracious reproof and welcoming us again into your loving embrace. And so we say, holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. He came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. In ministry among your own, Jesus cared for all, forgiving their failures, healing their hurts, and nurturing their faith, giving himself for those he loved. He inspired ordinary people to spirit-filled living and displayed in his life and death and rising again the power of your spirit. On the night on which he was betrayed, while he was at the table with his disciples, Jesus took bread blessed, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. Each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we remember the saving death of our risen Lord until that time he comes again. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dising and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you dedicated to your service while remembering great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, when you possess us, we cannot help but be in relationship with the whole of humanity. When your wind blows, we are swept up in God's salvation plan to bring unity, wholeness, and abundant life to each and every corner of creation. When your flames burn, we see with clarity our complicity with sinful systems and our personal participation in inflicting pain on others. May your refining fire burn away all that prevents us from fully following Christ and illumine the way we are to go. Enliven our discipleship and send us out to preach, teach, baptize, feed, tend, and heal. Advocate for the least, seek out the lost, and stand with the oppressed until death and pain and crying are no more. Precious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Help us to love you above all else and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, demonstrating that love, that love in deed and word toward all your children. Keep us faithful in your service until we shall feast with all your saints in joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Come to me and never be hungry. Believe in me and never thirst. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Eternal God, we give you thanks for all this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Michael Coffey describes the Trinity this way. Trinity is a free verse, cosmic love, a gift sending sound waves through the earth to hurl speech into the ionosphere, stirring radio waves to hum trinity. It is a synchroni synchronistic dream we and God have nightly sh shared about the interface of human and divine matrix of connections between holy and common. Trinity is a syncopated counterpoint of melody lines referencing each other and making music as sonorous as whales and pulsars and seismic waves all held in tension. Then someone inscribed the free utterance in indelible ink and someone analyzed the shared dream with Freudian precision and someone forced the messy melody smooth and straight time. Behold, just when you think they finish the job and brush the dust of such work off their hands and rest, Trinity dances out the door and finds willing partners to twirl. The eternal creator calls us. The risen savior sends us. The dynamic power of spirit empowers us. Go into the world making disciples for Jesus Christ. Go in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forever. Amen. Amen.